Hello, welcome everybody to Book Passages Conversations with Authors series. We're here today to talk about Helen Humphrey's new book, And a Dog Called Fig. If you are a dog lover, if you are a writer, if you're interested in either of those topics, this is a beautiful uh, intersection of both of those uh, topics. We also have uh, signed book plates. Uh, so if you're interested in this book and you buy from Book Passage, you will get a signed copy. Uh, if you like this event, if you like this video, if you're here today and you're happy, please like our video and please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. If you have any questions for the authors today, you can go ahead and type them into the chat there and we will relay them to the authors. Uh, today's speakers are Helen Humphreys, who is an acclaimed award-winning author of fiction, nonfiction, and poetry. Her work includes the novels The Evening Chorus, Coventry, and After Image, as well as the nonfiction books The Ghost Orchard and The Frozen Tames. She has won the Rogers Writers Trust Fiction Prize and the Toronto Book Award, and has been a finalist for the Governor General's Literary Award for Fiction, the Trillium Book Award, and the Lambda Literary Award, as well as the CBC Radio's Canada Reads. In conversation with Helen today is Jenna Johnson, who is the editor-in-chief of FSG and the editor of A Dog Called Fig. During her time at FSG, she has published a slate of award-winning and best-selling titles, including Luster by Raven Leilani, Severance by Ling Ma, and Owls of the Eastern Ice by Jonathan Slatt. Other FSG authors she's worked with include Sarah Shunlian Bynum, Samantha Hunt, Amy Leach, Claire Luchette, Sarah Moss, and Asali Solomon. Over the course of her editorial career, she has also worked with authors such as Sarah Baum, Angela Forney, Faiza Gwen, Young Ha Kim, Maggie O'Farrell, Chanel Ocaparanta, and Justin Torres. Thank you both so much for being here, and we look forward to hearing you speak. Thank you so much, Zach. And um, thank you, Book Passage, for hosting us. It's been one of the great delights of the past few years that we can have these kinds of events. And Helen is in Toronto, and Book Passage is in California, and I'm currently in London. Um, and uh, I think Fig is maybe right underneath Helen's desk, waiting, waiting for an introduction later. Um, but we're so excited about this book. And um, I, I picked up the British edition um, the other day and here it is looking really beautiful. This is a, a painting of Fig as a, as a, how old maybe Helen, maybe three months? Yeah, three, three or four months, I think, yeah. It's such a lovely expression on her face. Yeah, um, it just still looks like that, like that expression. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully we'll get an appearance from Fig later. Mm -hmm. um, before we do that, I wanted I wanted to sort of ask ask you to talk a little bit about to start about your own life with dogs. Um, one of the one of the early ways in which I experienced your life with dogs was through your novel, The Evening Chorus, and there was a line in it that just sort of broke my heart, but felt so totally true. And everyone I've ever told about it just gets a little tear in the side of their eye. Um, one of the characters says to another, "Isn't a isn't it a sad thing, he says, that in a full human life, we will have only five or six dogs. It doesn't seem enough, does it? Um, and you yourself had five so far, I think. So maybe there's yeah. another. I don't know. We'll see. I see how, I mean, Fig's pretty, pretty young, so she could go for a while. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a pretty good, uh, a pretty accurate arithmetic, that arithmetic of the number um, of dogs, if you're having them sequentially like that. Right rather than multiples at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So, so you've always had dogs. You've had dogs since you were a child. Did they always, did it always feel like one of the things the book's talking about is how dogs are perfect companions for writers, or I would argue also artists, generally speaking. And we can talk more about that, but sort of in your life as a, even as a child, did having a dog change the way that you experience the world? Yeah, I think, for sure, right from the beginning, because my I um, was born in England and my parents bred St. Bernard's or they bred one St. Bernard anyway. And so when I was a very small child, she had puppies and I, I was with the puppies and the mother dog. So I think I considered myself to be one of her puppies because I was very attached to the St. Bernard dog. And she was, you know, she was 150 pounds. She was an enormous dog. So she was bigger, actually weighed more than either of my parents who were both quite thin and small. <laughs> so. I think she was this really <laughs> large presence in my life and the puppies, you know, used to tumble me around and when I tried to walk, they would pull at me. And so I think I was always just in the, in that kind of chaos. And it was just right from the very beginning, it was always a big um, influence, I guess, on my life. Mm. Yeah. 
then later when Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, hello, everybody. We're having a slight technical issue. We're going to uh, take the event down for one second, and then we're going to bring it right back up in the same place.